A Japanese government official has apologized for the government's slow response in the aftermath of the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Nuclear Crisis Minister Goshi Hosono attended the meeting in Iwaki City, Fukushima Prefecture on Saturday. The event was organized by eight local municipal governments. More than 1,000 people attended. We're sorry that your irreplaceable lands have been contaminated because of the accident. The government is determined to decontaminate the area regardless of the costs. Meanwhile, the participants adopted a resolution calling on the government and the plant operator to pay full compensation for damages caused by the accident. Reconstruction Minister Tatsuo Hirano, who also attended the meeting, said he thinks the resolution is significant. Hirano promised the government will work harder to deal with the Fukushima problem. Tokyo Electric Park Company says it has paid about 80% of the $1.4 billion in compensation due to farmers affected by the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. TEPCO said on Friday that it so far paid $1.1 billion. It plans to make another payment by the end of this year to the farming and livestock industries. Agricultural groups from 17 prefectures demanded $1.4 billion in damages from TEPCO over losses incurred from the decline in the price of their products. The company said requests concerning farm products excluded from government compensation guidelines could take more time to process, but it hopes to speed up the procedure. A team of scientists has conducted a study in Fukushima Prefecture after higher than permissible levels of radioactive cesium were detected in locally grown rice. The team from the Agriculture Department of the University of Tokyo arrived in Date City on Saturday. So far, rice from farms in four surrounding districts has been found to contain levels of cesium above the government safety limit. The team interviewed farmers to find out about the irrigation systems and the lay of the land around rice paddies. It also collected straw samples from the paddies and surface and subsurface soil samples. The samples will be tested to find out where the concentration of cesium is highest. The team will also conduct an experiment using the soil samples to grow rice. We'll try and clarify how rice absorbs cesium. We want to offer useful suggestions based on the research, which could contribute to the rice planting next year. We learned this week that the disaster at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi power plant was much worse than we thought. Turns out, after last spring's tsunami, one reactor suffered a meltdown. Lucy Kraft shows us just how close it came from burning into the earth. Recently, reporters got their first look at the devastation left in the wake of the accident. Heavily reinforced buildings had been torn to shreds after a series of meltdowns and explosions. But as we found out this week, the damage was even worse. Reactor number one almost had a full meltdown. A new report revealed that molten nuclear fuel burned through the eight-foot concrete walls of the first protective casing surrounding the reactor's core, and then ate three-quarters of the way through the second casing. The meltdown stopped within a foot of the container's steel bottom. Masanori Naito is a nuclear engineer who has reviewed the plant's findings. It was a close call, he says. The meltdown may have been even worse, but we can say the containment held. Held, according to the report, because of the huge efforts to dump a continuous flood of seawater in the reactors to cool the nuclear cores. If it had burned through, it would have contaminated the groundwater in the soil. No one knows how far it would have spread. One man who has experienced the accident firsthand was Yukio Takayama, a veteran firefighter who was sent to Fukushima six days after the accident. He says, it reminded me of a haunted house, total silence, billowing smoke, eerie. With fires, you can feel the heat or smell the gas. At Fukushima, it was all the more frightening because the danger was invisible. So far, he has no signs of radiation poisoning, nor do any of the other 32 members of his squad. But at the time, they weren't sure they'd come back alive, and they didn't believe the government's assurances. 
The TV was saying there was no meltdown, no radiation leaks, nothing to worry about, he recalls. When you saw the damage, you knew this was no ordinary accident. The plant's operator says it's on schedule for a cold shutdown by the end of this year. That's when fuel has cooled enough to no longer pose a threat. But it's a long process. Dismantling the reactor and cleaning up the plant could take 30 years. Lucy Kraft, CBS News, Tokyo. The UN General Assembly has adopted a resolution calling for the total abolition of nuclear weapons. The Japanese government says the adoption of the resolution clearly underscores how the international community wants the North to abandon its nuclear programs. The resolution, which was submitted, submitted by Japan, urges the international community to work together toward a world free of nuclear arms. The resolution also expresses concerns about North Korea's uranium enrichment program and construction of a light water reactor. In a vote on Friday, 169 countries backed the resolution, while 11 countries, including China and Iran, abstained. North Korea was the only country that voted against the resolution. North Korea's ambassador to the United Nations, Shin Sung Ho, reiterated that North Korea has the legitimate right to use nuclear power for peaceful purposes. I'm trying to pick and choose either the most uh, interesting, important, or bizarre stories. Uh -huh. There's just, there are just too many to post. Here's a here's a whopper that just came in uh, earlier today. To <laughs> I can't. I read these things. I can't believe them. Tokyo to further support Fukushima in 2013 Winter National Athletic Meet. Tokyo has decided that it will hold the Speed Skating Championships for all of Japan in Fukushima Prefecture in 2013. Just like that road race of those, those poor young girls who were running in that, that marathon a couple of weeks ago. So these speed skaters get to go there and breathe that wonderful stuff. It just amazes me. It, it's bizarre. It's almost like, uh, as I say, say, we can't see this. We are going to put on a straight face. We're going to drink this radioactive material. We're going to eat this sushi. It's not the behavior gonna, of human beings. It, it's a bizarre set of behavior. Um, NRC denies the Massachusetts effort to stop nuke licensing. The Massachusetts legislature passed laws trying to stop the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission uh, and they denied the filing by the Massachusetts to stop the relicensing of Energy's 685 megawatt Pilgrim nuclear plant in Massachusetts. So we're not just getting regulatory m malfeasance here. We're actually getting what I call criminal activity on the basis of the Oh, uh, you bet. Absolutely this is criminal. Sure it is. Yeah. And then, of course, we've got the anti-nuclear protesters in Japan totally ignored. Here's the latest article from the Christian Science Monitor. Japan's anti-nuclear protesters find they're going tough despite Fukushima disaster. Of course, they're ignored, just like uh, they ignore Ron Paul here. And the nuclear exit cost uh, comes with cost. This is a review in the Wall Street Journal about what Switzerland's reliance on reactors and what it means. And they say, well, it's going to cost you a lot of money now. should reconsider getting out of nuclear power by 2034. That's a long way off. 